Hello Booktube! My name is Elizabeth and I read Bouquets and Books. And this is the F tag. It is part of the alphabetical series created by Jim at Jim's Books Reading and Stuff. I will leave a link to it in the description box below, of course. First prompt. F is for France. Who is your favorite French author? As opposed to English authors that I've read very little of, I've read many, many French authors. Uh, the choice is a bit difficult, but at the same time it's not, because there's one that at the moment I like more than the others, and that would be Émile Zola. Um, I am about 10 books in his Rougon Macquart series. Uh, I'm not reading them in order, they don't need to be read in order, uh, but I've read about 10 out of 20, and they're all very good. Even the ones that are not quite as good are still very good. Uh, in this Rougon Macquart series, Zola wants to depict the life very realistically of a family under the Second Empire, that is under Napoleon III. Um, he reigned from 1853, I think, to 1870. Uh, Zola also wrote other books that are not necessarily part of the Rougon Macquart series, and I would like to read them too. Another reason why I like Zola is because of the role he played in the Dreyfus case. Um, or Dreyfus Affair, Dreyfus Scandal, I don't know how it is in English, in French it's Affaire Dreyfus. What happened then? Uh, that was at the end, very end of the 19th century. Uh, in 1892, I think, something like that, uh, somebody in the army realized that information had been leaked to the German army. So they wanted to find the guilty person, and the guilty person was an officer named Alfred Dreyfus, who was the only Jewish officer to ever have worked at the general staff. Um, at the time, in 18, I'm going to say 92, it could be 93, um, nobody really doubted that he was guilty. He was tried in front of a military court and he was convicted and he was sent to forced labor in the Caribbean, which was a traditional French punishment at the time. Not very long after, Someone else in the army realized that Dreyfus was innocent because they found some more information being leaked by the same handwriting and um, they sort of knew that Dreyfus was innocent. So when that person talked to his superiors, the superior said, oh, you found another traitor, excellent. He said, no, 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 it's not another one, it's the same one, Dreyfus is innocent. And that person was um, not very subtly sent away and uh, he was in fear for his life, so he decided to leave some information with uh, one of his friends who was a lawyer. And somehow the information leaked to the public and it became quite known that Dreyfus was innocent. And somehow the army still wanted Dreyfus to be guilty because apparently the information that was leaked came from quite high in the army. To this day, we do not know who leaked the information to the Germans. Um, but there was some leakage and it was approved from quite high. What Zola did was to offer himself as a target to bring the case in front of a civil court because it had been only tried in front of the military court, so it meant that everything was pretty much done in secret and that the rules of uh, fair proceeding were not quite the same. So Zola decided to bring the case in front of a civil court and with that, to do that, he wrote his famous letter, an open letter in the newspaper called J'accuse. So I suppose in English it would be I charge. And it's basically a very long letter where he just charges a lot of people with a lot of offenses. I charge the president of the Republic of doing this and that. I charge general this of doing that. I charge colonel this of doing that. And I charge and I charge and he did that. And he knew that he would be brought to trial for that because of libel laws and because of censorship laws. But unfortunately, it backfired a little bit because the prosecution decided not to try him for the entire letter, but only for a few lines of it, for something like seven lines or 14 lines out of the entire thing that took a full page of newspaper. And that meant that a lot of the things, a lot of the new information could not be brought in front of the trial, in front of uh, the court. So uh, Zola would be convicted. He knew that he was uh, he, he was told in advance that he would be convicted. So he decided to flee. Uh, but anyway, it ended up that there was an amnesty for everybody involved, and the French government tried very hard and probably is still trying today to bury everything. 
And yeah, the, the reason why I admire Zola is that he used his fame to try to help someone and to try to have society change because at the time French society was extremely anti-Semitic um, and it lasted quite a bit because uh, I don't think the Nazis would have had such an easy time in the 1940s if France was not anti-Semitic a little bit. Um, I don't know if it still is today, but at the time anti-Semitism was really rampant in high society in France including in the army. So anyway, all that to say that Zola, I admire his writing and I admire what he did in that particular case. Next prompt, F is for fiction. Approximately what percentage of your reading is fiction? I would say that it's about 60%. Uh, if we count books, if we count number of pages, which is not necessarily reliable either, but I think it's about 50-50. Uh, I read quite a few short fictions, but I read quite many long non-fictions. Um, I think most of the non-fiction books I read are above 300 pages, while a lot of the fiction I read is well under 300 pages. Uh, little romance books and little uh, Maigret that are about 250 pages and Agatha Christie that is also about 250 pages. So it's close to 50-50, but it's slightly more fiction than non-fiction. Oh, F is for fantasy. Who is your favorite fantasy author? As I said in the e-tag, I don't read a lot of fantasy. Um, I, the only answer I can give is Terry Pratchett because I read three of his books. Uh, he, and with J.K. Rowling, he's the only fantasy author of whom I've read more than one book. So Terry Pratchett. Yeah, it's not a bad answer. I think this world is quite fun. Um, F is for five stars. How many books have you been five star read? Oh, how many books have been five star reads for you this year? I don't really use a star system, uh, but I thought about it a little bit because I think um, I hear a lot of people on booktube using star systems. So I was thinking, okay, if I was to use a five star system, what would it be? And I think the default for me would be three stars. If I like the book, but there's nothing particularly great about it, it would be three stars. If there's something extra, it would be four stars. And if there's something really, really extra, it would be five stars. Okay, so if I'm thinking about books that are really, really good, I would say it's about 10% of what I read. Um, so I would say, given the number of books that I've read this year, it would be around seven or eight books. That would be five stars. Um, F is for funny. Funny has two meanings. What books did you find both funny, peculiar, and funny, haha? -ha? I had to look at my books for that, and I found one that is both peculiar and funny, and that would be some short stories by Gogol. Um, the one that I had in mind was The Nose. That's the story of a man who loses his nose. And his nose is just running around in the city and the man is trying to catch up with his nose. So it's a bit odd when you think about it, somebody trying to catch up with his own nose, but it's also very funny. So funny, peculiar, funny, haha. And uh, it's not just uh, the... Um, it's not just the nose. Many other Gogol stories are a bit like that. They're a bit uh, peculiar and funny. So, Gogol. Uh, next prompt, next prompt. F is for Fight Club and film adaptation. What book and film adaptation both merited five stars in your opinion? I have prompts for that. I would say it's the adaptation of a play and it would be, in my opinion, the best play in the French language. That would be Cyrano de Bergerac and the adaptation, the 1990 adaptation with uh, Gérard Depardieu and, oh, who's the female lead? I never remember. Anne Brochet. Um, yes, this is a VHS. Now think about it. Who's the real master of technology? The person who has a 25-year-old VHS that is still working or the person who needs the latest gadget? I'm the true master of technology. <laughs> so anyway, this 1990 film with Gérard Depardieu is really excellent. I really love it. And uh, I love the book too. F is for flower. What is the last book you read with the name of a flower in the title? I had to look for that. Um, yes, it's here. This is a notebook where I write stuff like short reviews of the books that I read. I have kept such notebooks since the year 2000. In fact, since Christmas 1999. But when I started this particular notebook, I decided to put at the beginning the, to list every book that I had read. So I just copied from my older notebooks. So 
that enabled me to look for the last book that I read that had the name of a flower in the title. And I had to go back all the way to 2004. And it was, oh, I forgot to check the title of it in English. Uh, but I suppose if we translate the title word for word, it would be The Rose of York. And it's not even about uh, the, the War of the Two Roses. It's not even a historical novel. No, it is a historical novel, but it is set in the 1920s in Italy and France. It is by Juliette Benzoni, who is the queen of summer reads, I would say. Uh, there's adventure, there is mystery, and there's romance, and there's everything in that book. It's part of uh, uh, the series. Oh, I forgot the name of it uh, because it was in 2004. Uh, the name of the hero is Aldo, Aldo something, Morosini, Morsini, something like that. Um, he's an Italian based in Venice. He is an expert in jewels. And for some reasons, important jewels all, always get stolen and he has to catch them again and uh, find them. And he has a lovely little assistant. And uh, well, you can imagine what goes on with that. So th that's the last book that I read with the name of a flower in it. And the Rose of York, by the way, is not even a flower in that book. It's a diamond. <laughs> Next, uh, F is for flash fiction. What are your thoughts or experiences of this medium? Uh, my experience is none. I don't think I've read any flash fiction. The closest I can come to that would be tweets. Um, but I don't think I've read fictional tweets. Well, other than blatant lies, but uh, meant to be um, considered fiction. Uh, could haikus be considered flash fiction? It's poetry and it's short. Um, yeah, I don't have much experience, so I will leave it at that. And the tenth prompt you will find if you watch the video until the end and at the very end of the video is F is for fire. Is there a better book about burning books than Fahrenheit 451? I've never read Fahrenheit 451. Um, yeah, burning books, um, burning books, burning books. Nope, I cannot think of a single one. So that was the F tag. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine!